right, so here's my quick one. Ready? This is going to be a very quick one. We're going to keep this video under seven minutes. Get out of here. Yeah. LaShawn McCoy will not be the Bills starting running back by week 10. Not due to injury. Get out. Really? Click the bell to join Hashtag Nation. You want to try that one again? Uh, FYI for everybody, uh, premiere episode of our Saturday Live series um, is going to be on Sportscaster starting next week. So uh, two ways to access Sportscaster. They have an app available uh, in the Apple Store. It's only Apple right now. Or you can just use the website, sportscaster.com. You can access it all through the website. Um, yep, it's right there. So if you want to comment, which that's what the live shows are for. It's for us to talk to you guys. Yep. Uh, you got to register for Sportscaster in order to comment. If you just want to watch, you can just go right, right to the website or use the app. You can watch the show from there. Um, but if you want to get you know the notifications of when we're live and you want to be able to comment, you got to register for Sportscaster. It takes three seconds. Super easy. Well, here's, here's why, right? So you look at LaShawn McCoy, and we had mentioned this on our Hashtag Road Trips episode. I don't know if that will have aired. If it hadn't, go check out Hashtag Road Trips. Um, so you look at McCoy's contract situation, right? He's making eight-something this year, right? Mm -hmm. So let's say McCoy is, comes in and the first six weeks playing great, right? McCoy playing great puts you in the same position that you're in right now next season because you don't know what's going to happen again next season. You have no idea. Anything mm -hmm. is possible. Mm -hmm. Absolutely anything is possible. So the question really becomes, are you willing to allow McCoy to play great because of the position that it puts you in the next season? You give him opportunities to contribute, but isn't the ultimate process here to get Devin Singletary up to speed enough to, to start taking 35% of the snaps at running back? Like, isn't that the goal here by if week 10? If you think Singletary's your guy... Because you drafted him, not just as a handcuff third or round insurance pick. policy. Just third round pick. But you draft, yeah. And um, I think the, the approach that the Bills are taking, it's not like the – they're not – what your approach, I think, is the wait and see game. Mm -hmm. Let's see how he does. If he does well, okay, great. You know, blah, blah, blah. However, I think that the approach that they're going to take or that, they're, that the long view that they have is, okay, we have him for this year. Let's run him into the ground. Really? You think He's so? He's done. He's done with us. We're going to run him into the ground. If he has a great year, sweet, that benefits us. If not, everyone sees him take well, the hits. I mean, he's Dallas did that with, um, what the hell's his name? Oh, my DeMarco God. DeMarco Murray? DeMarco Murray. They, yeah, they ran, ran him like into the ground. Times. He was on. He wasn't a first-round draft pick. They drafted him for four years. His fourth year of that contract, or his fourth year, they just beat him up. Yeah. And I'm like, listen. Everyone's seen you take the hits. You can either come with us, or, or you're not going to get the deal that you want. That what long view, I think, I think because of age, not because of the contract, but I think because of age, the Bills are going to be like, listen, we've exhausted all we can out of LaShawn McCoy. Mm -hmm. Let's see how much we can get with him and see how much he can mm -hmm. bestow upon, Dev, uh, 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 upon Singletary, and then we're going to move on. Mm -hmm. I don't, why would you extend him? If he has a... If he has 1,200 yards this year rushing, why would you extend him? What's the benefit of doing that? You're just hampering. Then you got to wait another year with Singletary. Right. Then you only have Singletary for two years then yeah. after that. I think this is another case of where you just have to be careful what you wish for, right? I think we, I think as Bills fans, we all want to see Shady be successful, right? We just want the – listen, no, I, let's – don't don't change the narrative. Not We don't care if Shady's successful. If he's successful, the Bills are going to be doing well. That's one. Right. I understand that. Yeah. The, the Bills fans want the Bills to win. If he has 1,700 yards this year and they go 7-9, and nine, no one's going to care. care. Yeah, no one's going to care. If he yeah, has right. 1,100 That's... yards and 400 okay. yards receiving and they're 11-5 and five going into the playoffs, like, hey, he's rested. Sweet. Okay. I can see that. I can see that. I'm sorry. I just didn't mean to No, no, no. No, you're, I, I can see where you're coming from there. But I think that kind of just leads back to the point of I, at some point, you make the way to give Singletary the opportunities. Now, if Singletary it gets his opportunity week three, week four, and takes you know 15 snaps on offense and fumbles twice. I mean, you're not going to get many more opportunities, no, right? No, you're no. not going to get you're not going to get forever opportunities. You're a third round pick, not a first round pick. You're not going to get forever opportunities. Mm -hmm. But um, I, 
I think there's a very large case to be made for the fact that McCoy is going to be used until Singletary is ready to take over. And then there's going to be a slow transition. Much like anything McDermott does is a slow transition. Well, he's not going to put anybody out there that's unprepared. And it no. takes a while to get a hold of what he wants, mm-hmm. both offensively and defensively. Um, I Because that's why, I don't know, that, that's kind of a side topic for another day, but I think that's why he assembled the defense he did. Because mm-hmm. he wants to take make sure that he oversees the offense. Because he knows defense. He knows yeah. how to prepare and get those guys. Yeah. All right, everything's fine over there. I got all these veterans, and I got these guys that know what they're doing. I'm going to go over here and take care of the offense. It's a very different situation what's happening with LaShawn McCoy and the running back situation based off of what's happening on the defense as a whole, right? So it is unpopular. And, you know, there's a lot of fans that do want to see McCoy have a bounce back season because they believe that he's a talented player. Um, But there's some strings that come attached with that. And one of the strings is, okay, well, he has a bounce back season. Okay, now what? Right. What does that mean I, for twenty twenty? I don't think it. I don't think it means anything. I think they, they're allowing him to play it a lot because they could have cut him. They could have traded mm-hmm. him for not as much as they think he's worth to the team right now. Mm, they think okay. his role as a mentor and having a bounce back year is fine. Yeah, but to be a mentor, you have to believe that you're a mentor. Does he think he is? I think he thinks he is at this at this point. Like. It doesn't matter if he thinks he's a mentor. Just him being in the same room as Singletary, mm-hmm. you're going to pick up things from a veteran. Yeah. How he trains, how he's working out, how he's studying, what he what he sees, what he looks for. Because that, that, those are some of the things inherently that Singletary's going to get. The other thing is this. Answer me this. If he was such a valuable piece, and he is 30, I know it's mm-hmm. a different position, why haven't they extended him like they did Hughes? a money thing. His contract is so inflated. If he's a value piece, you extend him two more years, you know you can you can prorate the rest of his contract over the, the life of that. Right, but the running back position is so is so undervalued. You let him hit free agency and say, okay, well we'll give you two for you know two for ten. It's best we're gonna do. Two for ten. It's half of what he's making right now. Mm-hmm. But you're not gonna extend him and say, okay, you're gonna make eight mil this year, but next year you're gonna make five. That's no player's gonna sign that extension. No player signing that. If next year he's getting zero, he might. Well, then two, two for, for ten. Then two for ten is looking pretty damn good, isn't it? Two for it? twelve. Extend him two for twelve. Six a year. You're yeah. not gonna get a better deal anywhere else. I I agree, but no player's gonna accept that. They're gonna take their chance on free agency and then come back, unless it's a drop dead deal like here it is now or we can't offer you an extension. So do you think that because he's on a contract year, the Bills are gonna get the best Lashawn McCoy? You know, that's why the signing of Frank Gore kind of worried me a little bit because I feel like that mm. might have been like, okay, dude, we're giving you your buddy. We're giving you somebody who's going to push you. It's your contract year. He never we're did, trying to push he you. He never Let's did go. well in that scenario, though. The one game that he played really well is when Ivory wasn't there. I know. When he wasn't in a snap share. When Ivory wasn't there, McCoy looked like himself again. Mm-hmm. Because he could relax. He knew yeah. nobody was coming in for him. Right. Exactly. He knew he could make a mistake and it wasn't going to cost him exactly. snaps. Or it just could have been the matchup. They were playing the Jets. He loves beating up on the Jets. Yeah, he ran different, though. He was decisive inside. Like, it was it was different. It, that game was just different for him. That could have been because it was against the Jets, I suppose. But it was different. Sorry, Ryan. I know, right? Everybody, Ryan, over at Jets Talk 24-7. The fact still remains, when you look at the running back position, I, I, I want to see LaShawn McCoy run confident again because I didn't see a confident LaShawn McCoy last year but I know if I'm looking at at what I expect from McDermott I don't expect them to pound him into the dirt although that would be the most logical solution because he's on the final year of his deal it's just pound him into the ground I really don't see that they're going to try and develop Singletary and I think he's going to he's going to steal a lot of those snaps after week 10 because that's that's McDermott's track record Okay, we'll get you a little taste. Okay, now go back. We'll get you another little taste. Okay, now go back. Get you, and you're going to do that for a couple games. And, you know, come week 10, you're going to start seeing him take more snaps if, if uh, Shady isn't hurt by then. And, I mean, I don't even see this team carrying four running backs. But I think Yeldon was signed because that's the type of player they wanted. They wanted to make sure they had a pass-catching back. And they have Singletary now. So what does Yeldon do for you? Yeah, he's on a two-year deal, but, I mean, it's basically league minimum. Mm-hmm. So... You sign you well, a player right before the draft because you just want to guarantee that you walk away with that kind of player. That's the kind of player you're looking for. And Yeldon's a lot bigger than I thought he was. 
He's a big dude, man. I didn't realize he was. Was he six two? Is he? I think he might be. He's he was over six than, feet. He was bigger than I thought he was. Bigger than I thought. Six <sighs> one two twenty. He's a monster. I told yeah, you. I didn't realize that. I always figured him as like a scat back. Those oh, guys are tr- normally slender. He's and the biggest smaller. and best receiving option on the team. <laughs> it's sad when you know when you looked at the height of the Bills, six one, it'd be like the now the third tallest receiver on the <laughs> Bills. Because you got uh, Duke and Sills are the same size. They Foster at six two. I don't think Brown's six two. Uh, Beasley's certainly not 6'2". Uh, I think Yeldon would be the next receiving player it's at that of, height. a lot of humanity. I mean, you're excluding the tight ends. Yes. You exclude the tight ends. Kroon and the boys. Mm-hmm. Knox. Yep. But, it, you know, I like I like the Singletary move because they believed that this was the right player. They made a move for who they thought was the right player. And mm-hmm. I, I respect them for doing that. I always respect the team for trading up for a player that they want. You know, that tells me that that's that's who they were targeting. If they wait, sometimes you're like, okay, this is who's left over. You can walk away with that feeling, right? But they targeted who they wanted, and they go and get them. That's what this organization has proven that they're willing to do. They target guys, they go get their guys, you know? And I'm okay with that. Yeah. But at the end of the day, McCoy's not their guy. He was inherited. Singletary is their guy. It's going to happen sooner or later. I think it week happens, 10. Yeah. I think week 10 is the time. You could disagree with me, though. Leave in the comment section. Paul will be there. Yeah. That's all I do nowadays. My full-time job. Hey, we made this deal a long time ago. We sure did. I do the laundry. You do the dishes. <laughs>